Night Expo. This is video three of four. This show is incredibly large. We can't do it in one video, two, three. We're gonna have to break it into four separate videos. Right now we're at the Mamaki booth here again at the Printing United Expo. Mamaki makes some really great uh, printers and cutters and a lot of other things. And they're local uh, here in Georgia. Mamaki uh, you know, they're manufacturing primarily in Japan, but they actually are local in Sewanee, Georgia, and we've talked to them, hoping that we can actually go tour their uh, headquarters here in the U.S. Um, but, you know, it, the women out there, if you ever wonder, how do they print this beautiful, colorful dress? This is sublimation, and it's typically a cut and sew method. Mamaki sells a lot of different types of printers, whether it's just for printing on paper, or sublimation um, on polyester, you name it, Mamaki pretty much does it. Um, looking at this machine behind us, Colin, I mean, this thing is incredible. This is not what you see at the other trade shows. Um, just extremely big. Yeah, let's see it from the front. I mean, the size of this print head is unfathomable. It'd be a kind of a fun ride to just sit on there and just have it bring you, but that print head is so big. Look at the speed that it is printing. I mean, that's incredible. So, again, if you're, Mamaki is a leader uh, in wide format and a lot of other technologies. Highly suggest you always look at them. Um, but there's a lot of other great vendors in the room. So let's go check it out, Colin. Again, like you can see that right there that you're looking at that it's endless is a fifth of the show. Yes, this, this straight hallway will connect us to a entirely different room. Entirely different room. I mean, it's, it's unfathomable. I would be completely lost in how any of this stuff works, but um, my father-in-law happens to be a production manager at a 200,000 square foot offset printing signage. He has 150 employees underneath him. So I had the unique opportunity to tour some very large operations um, that do a lot of this stuff. So while I'm gonna BS my way through some of uh, what we're looking at, I, I've been around it a little bit and uh, it's a totally different animal than apparel. And that's what makes the Printing United show so unique is it's not an apparel show. Actually, it used to be just signage and offset paper printing and, and that world of, of decoration. Um, but recently in the last few years, it went from again, SGIA to Printing United so that it's essentially branded for how everything is decorated um, in the industry because we have a lot of shops even using deco network who offer a wide range of services that extend past apparel and again signage uh paper printing it's very common i mean it's not very common it's less common but it is i mean in our industry we have mom and pops we have um super large businesses and you know like mamaki mamaki sells a lot of different types of printers um vehicle wraps. I've met a lot of people on Deco Network who print t-shirts and they offer vehicle wraps because you can take a wide format printer um, and then apply and squeegee then take a heat gun to shrink wrap that on there and it gives it a coating and not only can you do a print I mean if you ever wonder how window tint is done or that sealant it, it's still coming from a wide format printer same kind of technology except it's often not printed if it's again a clear coat or it's a window tint. So over here we have some uh, flatbed printers, cutters, laminators, um, because in the paper printing and the signage world, it's typically not one step and you're done. So let, let's think about um, signage. The, the most simple sign that I can think of, there, there's really two. 
a Coraplast sign, which is your typical yard sign, and secondly, our banners. And each often will have a second step, especially banners. So when it comes to banners, you're going to often hem them, which you're sewing uh, around the entire perimeter to, to give it extra durability. And then you often have them grommeted. Grommets allow you to then tie it to something else. Um, and, and when we think of signage in, in our apparel world, that's what most of us are doing. We're, we're offering maybe Coraplast signs and a lot of banners. So uh, really cool stuff. Um, again, in this room, it, it's way more than that. Uh, I mean, look at the floor plan, Colin. <laughs> yeah, we are there, the yellow dot. I mean... So this, the top part was pretty much apparel. We are now walking this way into this other room down here where it's a completely different world. It, it's a different world. I mean, it's unfathomable how much is here. I, I don't know how many other industries have shows this big. I mean, I'm sure there are, but it, it, this is as big as it really gets. Um, I mean, now I have something heard, like I mean, this, look at the footprint that something like this takes up. We're talking millions of dollars for a lot of these pieces of equipment. I mean, like it's stand, not- Stand next to this just for perspective of how tall- Well, I make everything look tall and, and big, Colin, but yeah, I mean, I feel like I could do some chin-ups right now on it. I don't yeah. think that'd make them real happy throwing off their alignment, but I mean, look look at the floor. How do you think this was done? Well, there was a machine in here that did it. I, almost every booth in here, the signage in it was created from the equipment and technology in the room. And, and Colin, here's your classic um, wide format printer. And when it comes to wide format, you have resin, latex, you have eco solvent, you have UV. There's a range of um, versions which use different types of inks and different types of curing systems. Most of your wide format signage um, printers are going to be curing the ink instantaneously so it's dry immediately. Um, UV has become very popular, but eco solvent, still very popular, uh, very affordable if you're just trying to offer banners. But one of the things I really like about wide format is the fact that it, I, it's just a different type of media I want on there. If I have an eco-solvent printer, I can load ba vinyl banner material. And when I say that, I could do a light banner, I could do a heavy banner, I could do a mesh banner. I can then use that same exact printer with just a different roll of uh, media to then print stickers window cleans, wall cleans. You wonder, how do they make a fat head? They use an eco-solvent printer most of the time. It's, it's, it's really not that complicated. One of the other really cool things about uh, wide format printing is the technology has gotten better and better and the price just keeps going down every single year. It's become very affordable and that's the most common non-apparel printing method that I see uh, being used. Well, look at this thing, Colin. I mean, whoa. So when you start to think like, how does Vistaprint print some of these things? This is how. I and mean, look at all these labels that can be done. Look at that speed. That's crazy. It's got foil in it, I mean. That's insane. How does somebody design that? Aliens. I, well, yeah, it's That's a lot a of video this, for another day. Yeah, yeah, I mean, mind blown. One thing that is interesting, so we're at the Heidelberg booth. Heidelberg has been, I mean, a German company, kind of obvious. They are one of the biggest and, and most well known. And what's interesting is, so for years, and it's still definitely popular, is lithography. And lithography is similar to how we screen print in for a full color design or digital. It's CMYK. But lithography uses a roll plate. So instead of burning a screen, you have a roll cylinder 
that is then essentially burned and then that specific color, cyan, yellow, magenta, black, are then printed onto it in addition to maybe light cyan, light magenta. But being in my father-in-law's shop, they got a new $6 million printer. I mean, it is incredible. And their Heidelberg printer was $4 million. And again, every, just like apparel printing, every product has a time and place, or every, every service piece of equipment. And what's becoming more and more popular, just like in apparel, is digital printing is catching up to the traditional methods of, again, where there's a little bit more setup, like screen, lithography. Um, the reason why digital is catching up is it's be the ink becomes more affordable. The technology behind it becomes better and better. Um, I mean, look at th th this, though, as you can see, Xerox. I mean, you've heard of Xerox. These are all digital machines here, and it's an entire inline machine in which it's going to go CMYK, and even in just their their image there, you can see the colors that it's able to produce. Um, and this is everything from a business card to a flyer, brochure, because it's all printed flat, and then you'll take it to the finishing or the binding department, so it'll either be um, cut down with the guillotine color, a cutter to become smaller or to be folded into a, a brochure, flyer, um, or maybe it's bound with, with um, I can't even remember what it's called, but it, it, it's just mind-blowing how, how it works. Um, All right, well, I think this might be a good stopping spot. I mean, Canon's over there, HP. I mean, some of these companies you might not necessarily think of in this world, they're doing stuff in this world. So what do you, what do you say we stop here and let's start part four here in a second? Sounds good, Colin.